Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome back to another Adobe Live. I'm your host, Fabiola Lara. Today on the stream, we're joined by illustrator and designer Bonnie Kate Wolf. Are you excited to be here today, Bonnie? Kate? I'm so Bonnie excited. Kate. Yeah. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Okay. I can't wait to see what you have in store for us. But before we get started, if you missed the previous stream, remember you can always view the replays on Behance or YouTube. Plus, start your day with the Photoshop Creative Challenges hosted by Paul Trainee every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific. Tune in and challenge yourself with a new prompt each day here on Adobe Live. And whether you're tuning in from YouTube or Behance, remember you can drop your questions for Bonnie Kate in the chat, and I'll be sure to get to them while we're live. And if you're joining us from YouTube, remember to hit subscribe to our Adobe channel so you never miss a stream. All right, let's see who we have in the chat today, Bonnie Kate. We have, of course, Wade. We have Robert. We have Vicky, we have Carol. We've got so many people in the chat that can't wait to see what you have in store for us. So why don't you introduce yourself and tell us what we're up to today? Sounds great. Um, hi, I'm Bonnie Kate Wolf. Um, I am an illustrator and a designer. Um, I practice primarily iconography as a specialty, but I also do a lot of drawing. Um, and so that's what I'm going to be doing today is drawing a vase and a bouquet. And maybe we'll also do some fun stuff in the background. Yes, I can't wait to see this. I'm very pumped to see all this flower still life kind of vibe come together. So let's head over to your project. Okay, perfect. So run us through this, Bonnie Cape. Yeah, so hello, it's me. That's my face. Um, <laughs> and as you can see, I really like flowers and colors. Uh, so you may not know my face, but you probably know some of these companies. This is a list of some of my clients. So I'm a freelance uh, illustrator. So for the most part, companies hire me on a one-off basis or sometimes recurring to design icon and illustration systems. Uh, um, so that, oh, sorry, go for it. No, I was just gonna say your work is amazing, incredible. I was taking a look at all of your stuff earlier and I'm just so impressed and I can't wait. I know we're not working on iconography today, but I'm still so excited to see how you work in Illustrator. I bet you have a lot of cool tips and tricks that you know we, we may not even know of. So yeah, just wanted to chime in with that. <laughs> oh, thank you. This is that kind of work, the illustration that is more iconography based. Um, so more systems minded. Um, but today uh, we're doing stuff more like this. So there's that um, image that you mentioned earlier. So we're doing, um, I just threw my mic on the ground. There we it go. happens. I, it happens I when we're live, too much. guys. This is real. <laughs> this is real time. Errors happen, but nothing. You handled it with oh, grace. <laughs> I loved it. Um, so yeah, I do more illustrative work and this is a sample of that. Um, this is all vector art. So if you're thinking she drew that in Procreate, uh, no, I did not. It's vectors. <laughs> um, and sometimes a noise filter. So Got it. everything we're doing is vector based and that is pretty much the entirety of my practice. So I'm excited to get to show y'all how we're going to achieve all these dreamy gradients, um, in illustrator. Yes, because that can be intimidating for a lot of folks. So I'm pumped to see how you work through this now. OK, all right. So this is what where we're working with today. You already yes. have this prepped. Walk us through like what we're seeing here. Really contextualize it for us because it looks like you're ready to go. <laughs> There's a lot. So um, I've kind of got like a mini mood board going around the image. Um, I find it's nice to grab images in advance of what I'm making. Um, sometimes there'll be reference images like this is actual flowers. Like, wow, like this flower, I really want to draw Beautiful. that flower. Um, so I've got some images that are reference images and then things that are more like a mood, like what am I trying to evoke with this? So in this case, I really like the color and the texture. This is a piece of ceramic. Um, this is an image that I found on Dribbble. Um, I just like how they're using this kind of like faded quality. So I'm like, okay, just taking that element of it in my mind to remind myself some like texture and color, use of pattern. So I just kind of grab some images that I like that are going to kind of influence what I'm doing. Um, when I'm picking images, oh, this last one is a, I made this using Midjourney, the AI, and oh, I really liked nice. how it turned out. So I'm, I'm like, okay, that's just, just inspo. Um, yes, that's a really good little like tip to mood board with, with the mm -hmm. AI, right? To yeah. see what it, what it compiles for you that maybe you haven't found on your own yet. Like the images over yes, on the left. Exactly. And I like to, when I can, pull images that are not necessarily what I'm going to draw. So like, I'm about to draw a bouquet, so I'm trying not to pull like 
I've got one flower image, but I'm trying not to just pull a bunch of other people's bouquet drawings because then it's just gonna look like theirs. Instead, I'm like, okay, ceramics, a candle, this random apple, like things that can inspire me without making it. So it's gonna be just like a copy of how someone else is drawing it, if that makes sense. That's so true. Yeah, like if you're making an illustration, going outside of illustration to find inspiration. Mm -hmm. But exactly. even if it's still, you know, I'm assuming you found these images online or, you know, they're digital images as opposed to maybe real world Im imagery that you captured on your own phone or something. How do you usually, do you ever get kind of those kinds of images, like just from your own camera roll versus what you're sourcing online? Is that anything? Is there I anything do. there? I do sometimes. So I was at a music festival a few weekends ago and there were a lot of really excellent patterns people were wearing. Oh. And so I'd be like, oh, where'd you get those shorts? And the woman would be like, oh, at a thrift store in the seventies. I'm like, okay, great. So Snapchat. I'm never going to get that. <laughs> Got to take a picture because these shorts probably don't exist anywhere else in the world anymore. And right. so I'm kind of gather images in that way. Amazing. And that's always good to know. I'm always interested to see how people are like kind of collecting their influences. Uh, 24 seven, right? Cause that doesn't yeah. stop. Like you said, if you spot something, you gotta, you gotta seize it. You gotta capture it somehow. So <laughs> I do. love to see it. Um, do you usually, uh, collect these images like in any organized way or is it chaotic or are you using Pinterest? Or are you using Pretty any chaotic. other mood board? Pretty chaotic. It's okay. like a Google, uh, orange shorts in my Google photo. Perfect. Okay. As long as, as long as we're both on the same page, um, I'm just like to check if I just like to know if anyone else has some really organized system that I am missing out on. So we're all yeah. on the same boat guys. Remember if you have any questions for Bonnie Kate, drop them in the chat. We'll be sure to get to them throughout this stream. Um, all right, Bonnie Kate, tell me what we're up to. If yes. that's all you have to kind of, uh, orientate us on. Yeah. I see oh. there's a color palette down there. There's these little, yeah. yeah. I got this, I'll, I'll talk about that more, I think, once I start doing some drawing. So, okay, because it'll, I think it'll come in more once I start making decisions. These are like, this is for decision making, these little guys down got here. Got it, so, perfect. Um, so I've split my artboard into four kind of main layers just to make my life easier. I've got inspo on one page, so, or on one layer, so I can turn that on and off. Background, just so I can lock things more easily. I've got the vase and then the flowers, which don't yet exist. Um, right. So I pre-built this just to test that it would work, um, but I'm gonna show you how to do it from scratch. So you'll notice that I've got these kind of wavy lines going through. This is mm -hmm. a gradient mesh. So um, what we are doing, the way that I built this is building a bunch of ellipses. So it's already yellow, that's fine. Um, the color, not important yet. We're just trying to go for form. I'm gonna make this a little bit lighter in opacity just so it's kind of okay. hiding. Um, Cause you're now you're like rebuilding it for, for us, right? Yeah, exactly. Got it. So it doesn't have to be exact. Um, I'm just trying to make a vase that's got kind of like a, a funky wobble shape. wiggle to it. Yes. Yep. So I've got these three shapes. I'm going to now use Pathfinder to create one united shape. And then I'm getting, I'm switching to a, which is, I forget what it's called always the, the white arrow, the magical white arrow. And it's then like I'm selection gonna, tool or something. Something. something like yeah. That. So I'm going to drag these out. So now we have a wavy lines, just like we did in our original. Perfect so soft little form, organic, exactly. ceramic vibe to it. Yep. So we've got this, um, oh no, transforms not what I want. Um, I want a line. There are so many magical things in here. So there we so go. So many panels. It's perfectly centered immediately. Don't have to be like, where did, how do I center it? No, no. A we line just, is like a under, it's like underrated in the sense that no one ever talks about it being so magical, but really I feel like that's one of my most used uh, panels in Illustrator. Yes, for me, making sure everything in a line yes. stays tight. <laughs> yeah, because, and it's so much easier than having to, like I tried manually centering it and I totally didn't. And so I pressed the one button and then it works much better. Um, I'm just gonna swap this to a different color so we can just see it. So I've okay. made a circle because we're now building the kind of base of the vase. I'm gonna switch between saying vase and vase this entire time. Me too, um, I'm gonna copy you. <laughs> so. I'm just gonna make sure that this rectangle is the same width as the edge of that looks like it is. Okay, so again, we're gonna group using Pathfinder and I sent it to the back using command uh, bracket. Okay, gotcha. so I've got this now. I made it a little taller than I need just so that I can kind of play with it later because it is not possible to make it taller later, but you're gonna hide right. it. But you can this. hide it now and, and slide yeah. it and customize it as you need, yeah. depending on the so, composition, which could change. 
Yeah, um, exactly. I might decide, oh, I want it to be really, really tall and skinny or something. So exactly. let's add that gradient mesh. So create gradient mesh. So it's going to give me these options of how many points essentially I want. Um, and I'm going to show this with the, the center. So you're seeing kind of where our bubble is coming in. So the issue right now is I need a line that goes through here because I want it to look bulbous on the four or sorry, on the three, um, uh, ellipses. So we need to add more rows until okay, we get enough. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So now we can see like, okay, I got a nice, volume. yeah, I got a nice line going through there. I got some here. So I have lots of space to add shadow and highlight. This one down so, here is looking real happy. Like so you're thinking a little bit ahead, right? On like how yes. you, you plan to color this. Yeah, what so you I'm might also, need in the future. Exactly. And I'm thinking like columns wise, you don't want to go too many, right? If I tell it I'm going to do like 12, all of a sudden you got to make color for all these points. That's a lot of work. Um, and True. like maybe that's what you're going for. But I'm like, what's the fewest I can do this with? So this maybe not quite enough. That seems like a good number of columns because then I've got lots of points to play with. Um, and then rows, I normally wouldn't do quite this many, but I'm a... Mm, we could probably get away with eight, actually, as long as I have this going through. And we're going to also add extra bonus shapes on top. Um, so because think, once once you decide, is it edit yes. editable? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've tried to figure out how to edit it, and I haven't 100% figured it out. Just becomes a hassle? Yeah. Well, also, I think this kind of stuff, I don't want to... I don't want to futz with it too much. I almost just want to, like play and just kind of see what happens if I'm spending too much time trying to figure out exactly what it's going to look like and like then go back. I don't know. It's more intuitive. So okay. I try to be kind of intuitive. All right. Got so it. what I'm Got doing it. now essentially is shading using this gradient mesh. Um, and now our colors come into play. So um, we can see yeah. already it's looking awesome. I did very little work. Illustrator's doing a lot of it's lifting very for me. silky. <laughs> yeah. So I left the white in the middle. That's not where mm -hmm. our light color will end up. But um, what I'm basically doing is using the direct um, selection arrow to grab these individual points and then using the uh, eyedropper to then select from my pre-made color palette all of the colors that I want. Um, you have to make sure you grab the right handles. So I'm just making right. sure we get the right ones. And now it's just like you're kind of deciding based on just feeling, right? Like what looks good, what doesn't, what you're going for using yeah. your mood board as inspiration. Yeah. So I am I know that these are colors that I like. And the way that I know okay. this is because I did a workshop um, and that workshop was with Meg Lewis and Meg Lewis has you, it's an amazing exercise. I highly recommend to anyone who's like, what colors do I like? I don't know. I know I like them. Um, but you're maybe not sure like what kind of colors to use in your artwork or like how to put colors together. Mm -hmm. um, and what I have learned from her is um, the way to find color is to look at images that you like, um, not necessarily images. Oops, see, I don't like that. I'm try um, not necessarily like, oh, I like this purple flower illustration. So I use purple now, but more like images <laughs> that are inspired from your like things you deeply love. Like, for instance, Meg loves mimes because Meg is amazing. Um, and so she uses a lot of black and white. Um, so she kind of used this discovery of what does she like? It's mimes, it's all these things that have to do with black and white. And so she uses a lot of black and white. I discovered I really like um, flowers and fairies and other kind of magical beings. Um, so I ended up building this color palette out of this exercise with, um, uh, with Meg and now it's amazing because now it's like it's like deeply rooted in your interests not just yes. aesthetic trends right so like yes, oh exactly. i'm noticing everyone is using lime green and lime green is great i mean it's a cool color um and you start using it but then you're like oh i don't know why i even started using lime green you know yes. it's it's not rooted in anything that goes back to you as as who you are as your core being so i think that's so cool that you've created this like very meaningful color palette, right? It's instead of just being like yes. pretty, pretty, pretty colors. <laughs> yeah. And because the issue with trends is they'll go out of fashion and then you'll be bored of them too. Like exactly. if it's lime green, that's the thing that everybody's loving. Well, that's great. If you want to use it a little bit, like obviously it's, it's fun to see like how you can use trends to adapt to your own work. But if you spend all your time trying to follow trends, you're always going to be behind. 
Um, so for sure, if you're starting from something that you love, you're like, I'm never going to get tired. Like I will never get tired of rhodamine magenta. Ooh, that that's how tired I will never get. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> like I love that color. And I know that I will always love that color. So Right. So I may as well just, it. yeah. Now you have this go-to palette that, you know, you'll never get sick of despite what's happening kind of on the internet or what trends are picking yes. up and, and all that kind of stuff. And that's definitely going to make your entire body of work feel a lot more grounded and rooted as a rooted. Is that a, I don't know if that's a, a word, a weird, oh, it's, a, it's the right word, but no, you uh, it it'll feel more grounded than uh, just going based off trends and what's cute, um, which yes works for a bit but like you said after a while you're like wait who am I <laughs> and why did I also, start using that color <laughs> if you're using like your color like your custom built color palette and it might be like me I've got you know like a bazillion colors Meg yeah. has like six like like she's got a much more refined palette than mine I just mm -hmm. love all the colors I could I couldn't pick fewer than this um but it means no one else is using those colors like you are right. the only person with your specific color palette um and it can evolve over time and you can, you know, add to it. And depending on the project, you might need to adjust and mm -hmm. this or is tighten for it me. for certain exactly. projects. Yeah. So it's just a really great tool because otherwise like you go into something like this and you're like, right, I have to pick 30 colors now ish, right. All these little points mm -hmm. to fill with content. Um, and it's so much easier if you've got a good starting point. Um, so we're almost done with kind of like V1 of the coloring on this. I mean, I like how yeah. it's kind of turned into a rainbow. I mean, that shouldn't really be a surprise to me. I mean, based off your color palette, it was inevitable. It was. <laughs> it was so, inevitable. But um, just to reiterate to folks, each of those intersections are customizable like color points, right? Yep. That's how you're creating this entire gradient. Just for anyone tuning in here who's like, how is this gradient happening with just like yep. the 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 eyedropper tool? It's each little point. Yeah. And so what I'm like this, I have to remove because it's <laughs> does it look a bit funky? Like up here is looking real good. Down here is looking yeah. a little bit more of a hot mess. So what we're trying to ooh, zoomed in a lot there. Um, what we're trying to do in terms of actually shading, like thinking about <laughs> more science -y volume. Things. Yeah. Yeah, is volume. So, um, I like to have kind of like some lighting on the edges that's going to be a little different from what's happening in the middle, but we need the kind of bulbous section here, the bulbous section here and the bulbous section here to be lighter. So like this color okay. is too dark. I was just kind of playing around and we're chatting. Mm -hmm. So having fun, not focusing on principles. Right. Um, but that's what's going to, I mean, somebody out there could choose to leave it like that. I'm sure it would work in some ways, but yes. yeah, when you're keeping in mind the, the shape of the form that you're trying to convey using the gradients to start shading, as opposed to adding another element mm -hmm. that would do the shading, right? You're doing kind of all of it at once. You're doing volume, color, lights, and shade Yeah. with one gradient mesh. Yep. And we're Which doing like because you can do the edges too. That's how I'm getting these. I, I love the edges the best, like these really yeah. tiny bits of lighting. So like there's a point here, I think it's probably green. Yep. And then there's a point here that's yellow. Um, and that's creating this really beautiful kind of green to yellow. Like halo um, effect around it, right? Yeah. Because now your mind thinks the lights coming from the back is that yellow or that green or, you know, whatever color is on the edge. Yep. And so we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to leave it for now. Um, okay. What I found both with oil painting and with digital art, um, like when I'm designing and drawing um, is if I futz too much with too much <laughs> with this uh -huh. before building some more stuff, um, I will build a perfect vase and then the rest of it will be like, oh, well, it's not pretty. And the vase is so perfect and the other stuff doesn't look good and I'll get frustrated. Whereas if I'm like, okay, this isn't a pretty good point, I'm going to leave it see how I feel about it and do other things and then come back to it and make adjustments. So like, I'm not sure how I feel about this red kind of shape. Right. But if I start to add background, maybe that will influence whether I like what choice I make. Because right now there's right. no context. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like refining it all together as opposed to refining each piece as you go, because then yes. um, it'll get trickier, right? Because now you have a very tight, let's let in this example, vase. And now you have to get like the perfect flower or else it's going to all never kind of mesh together. Um, so I totally get what you mean. And I think it's it's smart to work that way. Plus, it almost goes by faster that way, right? Like no use in perfecting the vase if you still don't even know what the style of the flower is going to be. Yes. 
you know, you kind of work against yourself. Yes. And I'm, who I put that in the face? I think I. Tell me I what you're have... up to right now. I'm, I'm fascinated. You're moving the color. I, layer. I'm trying to move my, um, I, I keep putting the inspiration thing into the vase uh, layer. So I just wanted to move it so I could see on top of my background. Got it. Because um, I'm going to do the same process with this mm -hmm. background here. Um, okay. So the way the coloring is set up is actually pretty close to what I want. So I'm going to try not to think too much about the like actual colors I'm picking from the palette. I'm just going to be looking for, ooh, I'm going to bring this down a minute so that it's a bit easier to grab. Um, do you think I'm just you want thinking about darker colors dark. or lighter colors? So I'm more just like putting where where the dark colors are supposed to be. I'm putting dark colors and where the light colors are supposed to be. I'm going to put light colors Perfect. and I'm not really thinking about which color. So like, should it be pink? Should it be purple? I don't know, but I know it should be light. Um, mm -hmm. And this is something I learned doing oil painting and watching people who are really good oil painters and <laughs> like me, who is very much still a student um, of oil painting um, is you want to think about value first value is how light or dark something is um and then you think about color second um because if you have the values right even if your colors are slightly off it'll still look pretty darn good because right your brain's like yes those are those are the correct values um versus if you're pulling the wrong values even if your color is technically correct it, your, it'll your brain's warp gonna... like the form yeah so we gotta we gotta have our values so Ooh, that looks this, so good i think that's working again yeah, i'm like that's not working sure, amazing but i'm gonna leave it it's a very it's a very beautiful rainbow pot this thing I've made. Yes. okay so we bonnie uh, but bonnie kate before you move on um yes. we have this amazing question here from robert Wenner wennerberg um do you use freeform gradient or oh. do you use the mesh only Oh, we're going to use the freeform gradients. Okay, we're, so stay tuned, everyone. Everyone in the chat's been talking about freeform gradients. So I'm like, yeah, now you guys know it's coming up soon. This was just yes. one of the many tools that you're using to complete this project. So there you have it, guys. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So because so the way that I've chosen to do this um, is the vase is a man-made object, essentially, um, okay. even though it's kind of got natural forms, right? It's squishy and and round. Um, it's still more geometric. Flowers are very much not. They are very natural and they have lots of little bits. And we are going to be using the freeform gradient to do that um, because it's not like one bulbous shape. They're made of all these little pieces. And the way that light works on these is very different from how it works on an object like this. So we're going to be using the freeform gradient tool and also just some some basic linear and radial gradients. Um, Perfect. Oh, I can't wait to see how how you kind of use all these different tools to make this come to life. I'm very excited. So stay tuned, everyone. We have a lot to learn today from Bonnie Kate. Um, okay, what's going on now? You are using the pencil tool, I think. Uh, the pen tool. Because pen tool. Okay. I am a pen fiend. I love the pen tool. Um, so I am building some leaves um, to start because. I know what color leaves are. In this case, I want them to be green. Uh, okay. You could do leaves any color, but I, I'm going to go for green. Uh, well, I say green. It's going to be green with a bunch of rainbows. Um, so I'm going to start with that to just kind of, I'm looking at this guy as a like, hmm, how, am I, my, how might I structure this bouquet? Uh, right. Just because this is a lot of little spindly pieces, and I think I want it a little more dense. Tight. We'll see. Mm -hmm. um, but I've got a leaf, and I'm going to do one more leaf. I'm imagining kind of like... Um, like a rubber plant. So yeah. in this case, it's knowing that I have a plant that looks like this in my uh, greenhouse room Collection. in my house. Yes. yes. Um, so we were talking about form earlier and how this is like nice and it's man-made, but it's also kind of organic. These mm -hmm. also need to feel less like they're very, they're, they're pretty, but they're a little, a little rigid. So we're going to use another tool that I love, which I have to find, where did I put it? Um, it is. Ooh, I'm do -do. curious. I'm curious when someone expands oh, this, all the tools, I'm like, which one are we going to pull out? Oh, it's all of these guys. Okay. <laughs> um, we have a comment here from Sean Cosell. That is a great color palette, green and rainbow. <laughs> it's so oh, turned beautiful. On that thing. Okay. 
I don't know why I couldn't see it. Oh, it's, it was under the width tool. Okay. Got it. So Classic. Um, it's, it's this guy, it's the warp tool. So instead of drawing a leaf um, and trying to put in all of its many facets of, of, bigger than that, um, of like how they're kind of wavy and natural and wobbly, um, I start with the basic shape that I want, which is like, if I were doing a more geometric style drawing, um, it would be something probably like this. I'm gonna make these a little bit smaller for the purpose of what I'm about to do. Um, okay. And then I, mean... I get out our friend, the warp tool, and that is where I start then mm. playing with the shape. Um, right, because it, the pen tool will kind of naturally make it as perfect as possible. Yeah, and, and a lot of people use the pencil tool or they'll like, they're, they'll start yeah. their drawing like this. Um, the way that I draw is just a little more like start with structure and then add, personality. <laughs> remove structure. Yeah, add personality. Yes. So like now we've got this leaf, this, it's the same leaf, right? Like we can mm -hmm. tell it's the same kind of plant, but this just has a lot more personality. So we'll just go in here as well. Yeah, um, and that's kind of like how it might, uh, depending on the angle that you're viewing the leaf at, right? If, if you're not viewing it uh, like just right on, it'll look a little wavier. It'll have mm -hmm. those curves, especially if it's like a baby one versus a mature yeah. leaf. You know, we have all of these elements to consider that we want to incorporate into this plant drawing. So. I think that warp tool is a really cool little trick to, because if you had to try yeah. and make this shape with the pen tool, it, it would it would be a lot more challenging. You'd just have to make all these anchor points. <laughs> and it would look less natural, I would, yes. I think. Like the there's something magical about losing control with the with the warp with tool the warp of tool, it yeah. just kind of doing what it wants. Um, right now, what I'm doing is just taking the smooth tool and going over these. Um, these points because you'll see like stuff like this. I don't love this. Like that's right. not, that's not it's a little clean. too quirky, a little too quirky. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm just going to go over it a few times. Okay. That wasn't not enough times. Um, I'm so going to just go in with, it. yes, there we go. Yep. So just want to get this right. It's not as crucial as when I'm doing it with the, um, uh, with the gradient mesh, because with the freeform gradient, you can keep adjusting all this as much as you want, but, um, okay. It's, it's just nice to kind of get them cleaned up. Okay, yeah. so I think we're gonna probably have a couple leaves like this. They might be a little bigger. That's kind of nice. We got that going. Let's rotate it a little. Okay, so uh, let's add some more colors. And where are, do our colors come from? They come from my, my pre-designated palette. Master color palette. Yes, and you could probably use like an Adobe library or something like that, but mm -hmm. I, and lazy and I like the color picker. <laughs> yes. And also just viewing it sometimes helps too. Like seeing it like that right in your face with the little yeah. circles is it's, it's like nice. you know, you're painting and you got your literal palette. Yeah, and you're exactly. Dabbing it, off of it. it feels a lot more natural to do it that way. Um I need okay. So we're gonna be using a lot of this and a lot of up here. Um oh Call one last thing. I am gonna use the pencil tool in this case, um, which is M. Um to add in my kind of the stem mm -hmm, of this guy. Mm -hmm. which... We had here Robert uh, Wennerberg again comment, what if you drew the vein before the warp tour, tour, Ooh. warp tool? <laughs> that could have also, you could have also done it that way too, right? You totally could. Yeah. And when I'm making these, it's I kind of know choice. like if it goes in on this side, it's coming out on this side, like mm -hmm. in over here, it's going to have to bow out. Like if it right. goes in at the same point, it, it'll look a bit funny because that's not how leaves work. Um, but yeah, so if you're like, I want to have this pre uh, pre drawn, yeah, you, totally you could, could you could you could totally adjust any of these steps uh, throughout the process uh, and test it out yourself and see what works what works for your workflow. Um, it's also custom and dependent mm -hmm. on how you how you like to draw. Um, so yeah. Absolutely. Give it a shot. Give it a shot, Robert. I'm sure it'll work. Perfect. Um, right, and remember everyone, awesome. if you have questions for Bonnie Kate, drop them in the chat. We're happy to take them. Um, okay. That vein looks amazing. Looks so real. Much better. I have the first I time it. I drew it wasn't perfect, but this time <laughs> I'm very happy. So, perfect. all right. I just want to have those because if I don't have them and the leaves are gonna be a little bit harder. So, um, right. in this case, Figuring out where the light and dark is, we ha I have to make a couple decisions. So one is where is the light coming from in this drawing? In this case, I discovered it while I was building this. 
Yeah. Um, the light is coming from this direction. Oh, there we go. That that's a really strong color choice for this arrow. Um, <laughs> there we go. So it's coming from this direction. We know that because the lightest points are over here. So like right. this yellow is pretty light. We've got this lighter yellow. This is lighter. So I know the light's coming from this direction, which means that the lighter points in the leaves, this light leaf will probably be lighter than this leaf. And we're going to have some sort of thing happening along the edges on this side, probably not as much on this side. If we do have something, it'll be darker probably than what's happening on the other side. Um, you don't have to draw, like lighting is not always necessary. Like this beautiful apple, there isn't lighting, but it yeah. doesn't matter. Like I just like lighting. So, um, so in this case, I'm keeping that in mind to help me uh, make decisions about what colors go where. Because otherwise- this is where the kinda... scene is essentially in, in its yeah. atmosphere. Yeah, I feel like some people like to use it, some people don't. I think when you have kind of such a wide color palette that has uh, colors that could be used as light and darks, it, it totally works. Um, and even though you could omit any sort of light source, right, and kind of create whatever you want, it is going to add another element of depth and atmosphere um, if you start naturally kind of thinking about it. And, and don't you think it helps you color a little bit too? It helps yes. you make those decisions. Yeah, because when you're working with this many colors, like you're you're asking for a little bit of trouble if you're not yeah. prepared to figure out how you're gonna Set handle some rules. this yep. many. Yeah, because it's 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 a lot of colors um that I like to do. Um I'm gonna just add some points in. I was kind of doing them. Tell tell like us about this time. tool that you're using now, because this isn't the gradient mesh tool. Uh, what is tool the, is this and how are you adding those dots? Yeah, so this Walk is the through. freeform gradient tool. Um, Perfect. So you can either make points or lines. So in this case, I started with some points and then I kind of turned them into lines. Okay. Um, and then now I'm going to go in and color these individual points that I've um, added. So I'm not just using green because I know if I just use green that it's going to be kind of monotone and compared I to the rest of the points. drawing might be a little flat. Yes. Yeah, we are. Uh, I switched back to points because I'm now working on this point. Um, so customizable. Like, yes. So it's it just it's just super fun. Like you can do so much. You can figure out like what color like oh I like the purple, but I know that part should be darker. So now I know. Okay, I'll go in with the darker purple. I think also at the end, I want it to kind of fade out a little bit. That's not really how plants work, but this is it's a drawing. We can do what we want. Um, so I'm going to set that to 60%. So over here in the gradient panel, you can set your opacity. So in this case, I set it, uh, and 60. it's per point, not, it doesn't control all of the points, right? No, just the one. That's so. cool. Cause then you can totally customize each little point as opposed to having, uh, it affect every single point in your gradient. Yes. I really like the level of specificity that we can get. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm going to make more more wait of can you purple. zoom in and and show us exactly how to create that line um yeah. in the gradient tool just because we have a question here from bliss art asking how do you make a line with the free form gradient tool yes so. okay so um let's say you've started with a point because when it starts you with a point you're gonna you, you, you want to add to it so <laughs> yeah. um it's probably gonna start you with points in this gradient um, panel. So we wanna switch to lines. So if we click this one, we can then form a second point. Um, it will start you in a straight line. If you add a third point, you can see then it creates a curve. And then we can go in, I I go back and to points switch back to and move forth. around. Oh, just to move okay. them, I find it easier because otherwise sometimes it wants to make more, more lines. So now I'm gonna be able to create this kind of highlight on the edge and I can move them independently. And then if you click the eyedropper, um, you can then go back into- uh, Change the, edit the colors. Yeah, I, I I clicked something that was not what I needed to click. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's amazing, Bliss. I really hope that helped you out. Hopefully you give it a shot. Um, it looks really fun. I haven't used the line version myself, but I can't wait to use it after, watch, after being in the stream and watching uh, Bonnie Kate work and show us how magical it is so what i'm adding now is instead of doing it from my color palette i'm mm -hmm. using the color the rgb sliders because 
at this point, I know my palette pretty well. And sometimes mm -hmm. there are gaps. Like right. in this case, I don't have any kind of mid-tone greens. I only have mid-tone blues. Um, but for this drawing, I need mid-tone greens. I know myself well enough to be like, I can add this bright green and it's fine. Um, my color palette is like, if, um, I guess my whole theory on color would be, if the colors aren't working, just add 10 more colors. And yeah. all of a sudden it's going to be fixed. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I feel like if it's mostly colors from your color palette, it'll still look like your work, yeah. even if you add in a couple new ones um, that just, you know, like you like you said, you needed a, a mid-range green. Okay, just yep. add it in. Everything else is from your color palette, so it's not going to stick out weirdly. It's going to all yep. look like you anyway. I need more mid-tone greens. <laughs> add them, Ooh. add them. There we go. I think okay. I said mid-range, but I'm in mid -tone. <laughs> I definitely okay, knew what you meant. I think that's pretty good. Um, that the last beautiful. thing I'm going to do is just for this guy is add a gradient, um, a linear gradient. So Ooh, okay. Um, the gradient tool. Ooh, just kidding. It's it's not. I don't need the gradient tool. I'm already in the gradient tool. Um, <laughs> so this. Uh, I'm going to just make this point one of my lighter greens, and then I'm going to make this point also one of my lighter colors, and then I'm going to throw a color in the middle, uh, because what I'm trying to get is a line that kind of fades out at the ends. Um, okay. This needs to be thicker. It's just really thin, so let's bump up the stroke. Bump it up. Bump it up. Um, okay, so this this is working okay, but I think the colors are a little funky. Okay. I think it just needs to be a little dark. Ooh. I... I, that I forget. I have to click that, and then I just go hog wild with the, with the, with the eye pressing I. Yep. Um, it happens when then suddenly you're turning everything into a different color. You're like, why? Yes. That wasn't what I wanted. Um, but it happens to all of us, as you can see on this live stream. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna then just take this. Mm -hmm, there we go. This kind of pink point, and just whack that opacity down so that we can see the colors kind of come through at the end. And I think the last little bit I want to do with this is make that a bit darker. So again, I can go in and color pick, or I know that I'm about the right value, so I can just use my um, my color tool here. So, okay, that's a pretty nice and subtle little line. Um, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use the eyedropper to create the nice. exact same line over here. Um, because then if I want to change the color, it's just a little bit faster than you You can just edit through. it as opposed to starting from the beginning. Exactly. Working um, smart, working smart. I'm going to do the same thing with the leaf. Ah, so it's so cool like, to see that because now you can see exactly how those colors translate to this new shape. Yep. And so we can go into edit gradient and we're like, huh, it's like Illustrator was like, I'm not sure exactly what you wanted from me because <laughs> these shapes are not the same. Right. But it is really cool to see. Yeah. And then honestly, just kind of play with it. So what I'm seeing is I actually really like how few points is like kind of making this mm -hmm. leaf really work. And we've still got this light color. We talked about our light coming from over here. We've still got that light over here. I feel like if I just add a little bit of bright green down here, we're going to be pretty much set for success. Set. Ooh, that's so cool. I love, I love seeing how like intuitive it can be to make these choices because it is a stylized rendering of a plant right so it's not like mm -hmm. we need it to be perfect we can just go with like the vibe that you're after and yes in this case the vibe is very much influenced by light and shadow but yeah we anyway. are all about vibes <laughs> yes like Ethereal principles of art hair. and then vibes yeah are more just as long as you know that you know how you have to know like you know the rules to break them or breaking yeah. them for the vibes yes Exactly. Yeah, because you can you can absolutely like change the way things work. You just need to be thoughtful about how you're doing it so that mm -hmm. when you break so the it rules, looks they... right, right? Like when you when you see it arbitrarily, you'd be like, Oh yeah, that works. Yep. I just swapped okay. the sides of that so that I would have the pink one down at the at the bottom. Okay. Beautiful. So I think those again, I'm like, I might make changes later. I, right. for instance, I'm not hundred percent on this line. So I'm like, okay, quick warp tool. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. Just a bit more centered within the leaf. Um, yeah, it was running off a little to the right. A little much. And that's where I'm like, I knew that, 
but I'm not going to torture myself about it because I want to see like, how does the rest of it come together? Because there's no point in getting this line absolutely 100% perfect. If then you draw the whole leaf and you're like, actually, I hated that leaf. Or if you end up covering it with another Mm -hmm. element and then you're like, oh, I struggled for that perfect leaf and you can only see the tip of it anyway. I don't know why I bothered spending two hours perfecting it. I mean, yes, that's why, I mean, I feel like that's why people use sketches too. Do you ever use sketches? Did you use one for this and you just I mean, skipped it for our sake or? I mean, I was... pretty much, I did. Um, it's, um, oh, it, the, that, ooh, yeah. In reader, this. Um, Got it. The presentation that I, that I, that y'all just saw. Um, yes. I essentially did. I made this sketch. Um, okay. So like, this is my first attempt at this drawing, essentially. I knew I wanted to do the wavy, bubble pot but I Mm -hmm. wanted to save that for the live stream so I figured out oh if I make the lines wavier on these leaves it looks way better and I figured out kind of like how I might want to do some shadow on the pot stuff like that so this one's a lot simpler yeah uh, because it was only a a couple hours but um this was my essentially uh your test run right yes okay cool okay Okay, perfect I can't wait to see and that kind of gave you a sense of the composition that you're going after yes so I was actually going to do some background, I think, just to fill this out a bit before we start adding all those flowers, because the flower, the color of them is going to be really, yeah, it's going to be tricky. The colors, um, if I don't have a background, you won't be able to kind of compare your values and then you might make things too light or too dark. Um, this whole thing is very rainbow, um, but we still need to have light and dark of course right next to each other so what I'm building is what you saw in that last image I'm gonna do a stripey ground um okay I I thought should I do a stripey ground again I already did stripey ground and I was like no I love stripey ground let's do it if you like it you like it and I do like it okay so um (laughs) so you you just use a lot of copy and paste to kind of build that with just the rectangle tool I did and I'm gonna I realized I need to make these the right color. Bef- the, these are not the colors I want. Okay. Obviously, they are not my palette, so they are not what I need. Um, so I think we need something that's maybe a little more neutral for the ground, okay. just to make the top pop a little bit more out from the ground. And the background's probably going to be pretty light. Mm-hmm. So I'm just kind of seeing what what color what goes combos with this. work here. Yep. And we need contrast between the vase and also between the two colors of the stripes. Themselves. Yes. Yeah. Like, ooh, bright pink. You always the bright pink you gotta use sparingly. Too much bright pink and it gets a little much. I think this purple's actually that kind of ooh. I like the purple too, the dark. Yeah. The dark blue I like and that. the purple really contrast. I'm gonna just I'm adding one more so we have symmetry. Okay. Um, and then I'm gonna use a fun tool um and that is envelope distort and we're going to make it with a warp so in the warp options there's a whole bunch of fun stuff you can do wait okay wave is not showing anything there's a flag there's an arc that's gonna show at the bottom there um we can make something bulge with with up and down lines a lot of these are not that interesting um inflate that it looks interesting that's cool Um, but It doesn't actually matter which of these we're picking because we're going to set it to zero. Um, What we are using this tool for is a vertical distortion. Oh, nice. And that is how we make it To give us like like, a little bit perspective. mm -hmm. Yep. And so that's why I had to make them super tall because Uh you see how thin it's getting at the very end. At the point. Mm -hmm. I I need to cut it like here. Um, So I needed extra space. So that's actually probably a little much. Okay. I think that's probably pretty good. That is um, such a handy way to make that as opposed to trying to build that yourself. It's just yes. kind of annoying to do. Uh, yeah. Not it, impossible, it's a, just annoying. <laughs> just really annoying. Like there's yeah. no no reason to torture yourself trying to figure out how to get the perspective on a bunch of lines to make the ground. There is this tool. Um, yes. So I'm using this because I'm going to make a clipping mask. Um, and that way, Boom. if I'm like, oh, for instance, I know I want these lines to be way bigger. Um mm-hmm. You can still edit it. Exactly. And I can see. Smart, 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 smart. We're learning so much here, guys. I don't know about you, but that was so cool. I think I'm going to actually. Yeah. So like this to me is a way faster way of figuring out how to make these lines. Because if you draw it 
and you have all your lines kind of just set. If you've yeah. manually drawn them, it's going to take a long time to do all this kind of fidgeting. Whereas the yeah. work tool is just so fast. Um, okay. I think that's pretty good. Again, like maybe we'll nice. change it. I think actually what I want to change is the clipping mask. So I'm going to have to go in and select the rectangle. Sometimes mm -hmm. folks, you put a clipping mask on something and then they're like, how do I change the clipping mask? Um, so if you go into isolation mode, I just find that easier because it, it's, um, it's isolated. Um, it's I'm clear. selecting that <laughs> rectangle. Yeah. And I'm just going to bring this down because I feel like where the ground is, is a, just a lot lower. Um, Got it. And then I'm selecting the envelope and I'll bring that up. That's much better. Okay. Beautiful. Let's okay. Yeah. And then it's not, it's shadow. not conflicting with the, um, bulges of the actual vase either. Yes. Yeah. Cause we want to, there's like a, there's going to be a, a sweet spot in here, I think. Yep. Um, okay. So what we're going to build now is an, a just nice little shadow. Um, and so, Ooh, I zoomed in a lot there. Um, we're going to use our trusty color silky. palette. I love zooming in and seeing how crisp everything looks. It's like this is oh it's so satisfying Look at that. it's so oh nice compared to photoshop pixels mm -hmm. it's so nice to zoom in in no an illustrator <laughs> no pixels no no pixels um so we're <laughs> going to use a oops sorry that is the i put it on the stroke um okay. so we're going to use a gradient and we're going to actually use the gradient tool now um so i want to make that basically the same shape as my oval um mm -hmm. And then I'm going to figure out where Hold kind of that a little bit. Yeah. I, it's funny. I'm actually using the same gradient as I did on the, um, on the, on the vein of the leaf, Yeah, but it kind of works because the vein of the leaves, like, look at this, is this color palette the same as this color palette? That was not on purpose. But no, but it using... just, your mind just knew exactly what to do. Yep. Uh, Yep. Wow, so I I'm like, it. okay, make that a bit darker because it's it's a shadow. And like, yeah. So the line that we're using in the vein of the leaf is the same as the ground. And that is what happens when you have a color palette that you're like feeling real solid on. Mm -hmm. Um things everything just, starts to line up. Yeah, they're harmonious because you've already used those colors. Um, so the last thing I want to do is add an effect, which is blur. Gaussian blur. This is okay. the one where I'm like, I'll try like a bunch of different options. Mm, that okay. And then I need to set it to multiply because obviously the pink, like it doesn't shadow. look like a shadow. Right. Yeah. And so multiply is a, um, for folks who are not familiar, it's a, what are they called? Color <laughs> blend mode. Thank you. Blend Thank mode. you, Monica. Yes. You remembered. <laughs> um, it's a blend mode. A lot of people use these in Photoshop and they don't realize they're an illustrator. Um, and so all of a sudden, ba boom. There that we have looks it. so good. I had never thought to use the Gaussian blur effect on a gradient oh, yeah. layer. I feel like, oh, yeah. why do you think that's better than trying to maybe lower the opacity or something like that? Um, I just think it kind of gives me more options so mm -hmm. I can go in here and then be like, oh, I want it to be a little bit less blurry. Like, do you see how it. Okay. like we're, you're getting this kind of It affects band. like the feathering of it. Yeah, it gives you really nice soft feathering. So there we go. I think that's actually probably the sweet spot. Amazing. So That's a really cool um, way to, to adjust it. I had never thought of that. And it looks really, really soft. I love texture and I love making things very soft. So it's yeah. just a little bit, um, it's a little dark. So I'm just going to, instead of futzing with all these numbers, mm -hmm. I'm going to just change the opacity 60. Of that entire thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Ooh. it's still looking a little like, because the thing is the shadow isn't coming if we're thinking about shadow, it's not actually coming out from under here, really. It's coming mm -hmm. out from under here because of the perspective. We have to be super careful about not making it look like it's floating. That's pretty right. good, actually. And again, this is something like you can you can spend adjust. ages. Yeah, but we'll we'll leave it like that for now. That's a nice little subtle gradient. And because we added those colors, it's just going to be a little bit more. It'll have a bit more personality than if it was just a black gradient. Um, or even just a green gradient because we get a little bit of that pink coming mm -hmm. onto the green and all sorts of things. Um, okay, a lot let's... more personality and it doesn't feel as flat as just putting like a, yeah, a dark blue multiply layer. <laughs> so it is using my last, my last color. We're just going to put that uh, okay. in blue. Okay. And then I'm also going to do, so again, we're thinking about lighting. There's mm -hmm. a lot of lighting and I didn't realize how much I was going to want to talk about lighting today. Yes. Um, 
Well, I'm so. sure that when you're working on it on your own, it's very kind of second nature to you. Mm. And then, you know, when you're here explaining your decisions, you realize a lot of these decisions are based on lighting. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Very true. So um, what I'm doing now is you're like, you just built that whole just ground. Covered, you you just covered it. the whole ground. <laughs> we spent all this time working on it. Um, Cause what we are doing is I'm just changing the orientation of this gradient is adding more lighting. Um, this, this live stream could have been called Bonnie Kate light stuff. Yes. Um, so I'm going to just, what I want is actually the lighter color. I do not need the darker color, but I just okay. want to know that when it fades, it's going to fade to this kind of bluish color. Um, and then we're going to play with more of the blend modes. Blend modes. So I think it's probably soft light that I want. I'm almost certain that's what I want. I just would like to show y'all a couple of others. So like just screen, very bright, them. lighten, also kind of bright, um, hard light. That's not bad, actually. That looks pretty good. That looks kind of cool. That. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we may do that. Overlay. What I want is for, so the way that light works is things farther away from you are darker. Like it's more complicated than that, but that's a that's broad what we're going tip. by today. <laughs> yes, like that, that's enough for today. Um, so what I'm trying to do is just very, very subtly make, and I'm gonna just, I just need to whack it below the shadow. What do you think is the benefit of kind of incorporating so much lighting and shadow from the beginning, as opposed to maybe doing this at the mm. end? I know some people work that way where they draw the whole thing yeah. and then add the light and the shadow. So, and you're very much adding it as we go. So yeah, tell me a little bit about why you think that works for you. Um, well, part of it's because I did the sketch and I figured it out when I was sketching and learned, oh, it looked really flat without it. Yeah. Especially when everything else is a gradient. If you do as many gradients as I do, you kind of can't have anything that doesn't have gradients is what I've right. learned. Um, like even just looking at it now with this flat background, it looks like the background is missing something. Mm -hmm. um, and what it's missing is a gradient. Um, and so, oops, no, no, no. I pressed I instead of clicking the tool. Um, so what I have learned is I need to be basically always be adding more colors, more gradients to make it work in my kind of style and aesthetic. Um, when Got I it. first did this, it took me a minute to figure out what what's working and what isn't. Mm. Right. So if you know that you have to add it, you may as well build it along the way because otherwise the whole time you're going to be second guessing every choice being and like, for just maybe it'll look guys, better. Cause I'm, yeah. <laughs> Cause I'm doing it like yes. trying to, to make it feel like, okay, we've done the whole ground. Now it's a little bit faster. So this is I'm liking where this is going. This I'm is doing this cool. differently than I did my kind of test. Um, what I'm trying to go for is like a soft gray lighting, but obviously it can't be gray gray. It has to be rainbow gray. It's the only yes. kind of gray I like. Um, so I'm putting in essentially a yellow. So that's more yellow. Um, this is kind of like a peachy color. So yellowish reddish, um, a blue, I guess it's more of a green and then mm -hmm. kind of a darker purpley color so that then when they all converge, we end up with this like warm gray. Yeah. Um, it's like all so, muted colors compared to the original yeah. color palette. And so we can see, I'll just put it on half the drawing. Ooh, okay. um, like this looks really different than when it's on this background. Oh, we can yeah. use the line again. Um, just seeing how the colors pair together, how they work together is super, super important because otherwise if you don't know the color relationship or the value relationships, you can end up making things that are too close in value. And then all of a sudden you lose your contrast and then you kind of lose the dynamicism of your drawing. Yes. And speaking of making sure you, you keep all those values kind of in line and you have your darkest darks and your lightest lights within your color values. Um, do you ever grayscale these gradients to see what's going on? Do you ever do anything like that to just, see oh, where see. things could be pushed further or is that just like mm, let's not bother <laughs> i i do not but we could real quick see what does that look like because i'm kind of curious now um, i want to know it might like break the whole thing uh, so you might want to save because if we're i'm like oh, how is it going to know <laughs> you do this 
Ah, okay, perfect. Ooh, so, this is yeah. so cool. Can you repeat that? Yeah, so this is sofa. a hot tip. <laughs> so um, you make a big black or white or gray, as long okay. as it is uh, 100% black or white or yeah, all the same uh, on your on your scale. Um, black, I think is the easiest. Um, box over as much okay. of it as you want to see in grayscale. Then we're back to blend modes. Mm-hmm. If you set it to hue, it's going to set it to the hue of black, which means it's making a grayscale. So we can see that like in my background, for instance, it's a little brighter here, which yes. is perfect because the light comes from here. I wish I could say I did that very thoughtfully, but it was more probably instinctual at this point. Um, we can see like, yeah, we've got the lighting kind of coming in here, less than here. I could probably add more dark here, but I'm also mm-hmm. gonna I'm gonna add some shadows myself. Um, but we can see like pretty good contrast between this color and this color and also this color and this color like there's really strong contrast pretty much everywhere the place i would say the weakest contrast is is between the leaves and the vase it's still doable like we can still definitely see yeah. those lines but wow it's pretty wild to see them next to each other um like if there was more contrast between the leaves and the vase i think it would be even nicer yes um, and this kind of helps you just quickly see where you can use those little spots because especially yep when you're dealing with rainbow colors, <laughs> it can get a little difficult yes. to see, you know, cause it just looks cool. You're like, oh, that looks great, you know? Yeah. But then once you uh, put in that black hue overlay, it really shows you where maybe you could use a little bit more uh, darks and, and, and lights. Ooh, that was so cool. I love that. Really yeah, I realized cool. I want to adjust it now that I've seen, it. like, this is the, the like, <laughs> oh, okay, now we need to play with it more. So like, I realized like this is the right value, but I like I want yeah. it to probably be more purple or more pink. But you could even build it out as you not normally would and then do that test and then mm-hmm. start playing with the colors overall once you have yes. every single element added, right? Because you might add now another element that's really dark and it'll throw everything off once again. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Let's build some flowers because I feel, how much time do we have? We have half an hour, we right? Have, Ish. We have an hour. Oh, we have plenty of time. Yes, oh my goodness. Here I was being like, I'm not going to get to these flowers. I'm having no. too much fun making the ground. We have um, plenty of time here. And I feel like this has this is so informative. I'm like, what else can we learn so about all these gradients? I really, really like this specific flower. So I'm going to attempt to make it. Um, Perfect. So this is the thing I did not test because I got lazy um, (laughs) and was like, I really like my leaves and my leaves are perfect. I'm done. Um, So I think this flower, this flower and this flower are all really strong candidates for like a more drawing-y approach. And then flowers kind of like this guy and Mm -hmm. like these little puffy ones, maybe even something like that. I'm not sure if we'll do the Queen Anne's Lace, but these little puffy ones, which I wish I knew the names of, I feel like those we could do more like stylized approach yeah so I'm gonna just show you how I'm gonna make uh uh make these things so I want to stylize them um and they kind of have like this it's kind of a spiky texture but it gives them this kind of upward or like they're round that's the main thing they're like very very round so they're spiky they're round there's a lot going on we should probably make a decision I'm thinking that the the roundness is what I like so I am going to delete half of my circle then I'm going to put it back um, but now it's in two pieces. And so why do I want it to be in two pieces? Because I am going to make a little um, round line sphere using the blend tool. Uh, so we're gonna go to blend options first. I tested this in advance, so I know it'll work, <laughs> but I need to change this number. So okay, um, okay. this is going to say how many steps or kind of how many blended steps between your first object and your second object. Now, okay. this started as one circle, but it's now mm-hmm. two objects. So we're going to blend from this exactly to this. So I just think that 24 is maybe too much uh, based on my my quick test. Okay. So we're going to try 18. It's going to do nothing. I'm just setting it up. Then we're going to make. Ooh, wow. It's that was so fast. There. Very fast. That was so fast. Ooh, can you zoom into it? Um, yeah, so we just can want a lighter see exactly color. what's happening. Yeah. So wow. I'm also going to make it a little bit, um, actually, I'm just going to make it bigger. I was going to make the lines thinner, but 
Oh, it blended, you guys. I know, I know Wade just said, will it blend? <laughs> it will. Will it blend? <laughs> will it blend? <laughs> it will. She, she will. All right. I'm going to, let me just scale this guy up for a second. Okay. And then, there we go. Will it blend? We, I think we said it like, is it cake that? Yes. Oh, <laughs> will it, it blend? <laughs> and do you know in what way it'll blend also? It will also blend if we put ingredients. <laughs> Ooh, so, I can't wait to see this. Okay. Yeah. Guys, so we're like, tune we're in. Something about if you're listening to us in the background, this is the moment Ooh, that you need it. to come back because this is going to be really cool. Interesting. It did something I've never seen before. Oh, it's because I, there we go. Oh, so you can, oh. okay. Now you see the, the, how the, how the, the cake that is a flower was made. Um, do you see how it's That's kind like of a like slinky? Yeah. So I just connected the two of them and then I now made this one on this side, uh, this kind of light blue color and this one, this dark blue color. Um, we could also, if we're getting real, like we want to get really, really crazy. Um, and we do. And we do. Uh, and we do. Outline. I forget where it is in the menu. So Out, uh, whenever outline you lose it, there you go. Whoa, wow. that's not what I was expecting. Interesting. You never know. Actually, what I wanted to do was essentially just flatten it. Um, but I'm not sure Illustrator is ready for that at this point, but <laughs> I'm pretty happy with this. Um, and we're going to make a bunch of them. So perfect. Um, so from the one, now we get tons of them. Ooh, this yeah, is gonna look think, so neat. I think we need three. And I'm okay. gonna add some little leaves as well. So now we're at a point where, because this I conceptually sketched in my brain, the the bouquet itself, I haven't. So I kind of, I'm giving you a little bit of both, like now, bouquet planned and bouquet also didn't plan. Right, uh, well, this is the organic part of the stream because it's flowers. Yes. So you can't really yes. plan a bouquet that perfectly. You know, um, you need to have that little element of surprise. I love it. Yes, this, that makes perfect sense. So um, now that we are in the organic part, I'm, I'm going to my pencil tool. I'm yes. just going to whack it into some color so that I can start to get a picture of the kind of layout of this. So mm -hmm. I'm just kind of looking at how these leaves form these around leaves it. Do. Yeah. So like, I think we could do like a couple of these little guys. The beauty of leaves is that they're very forgiving because they come in all shapes. They right. Do. So no one's ever like, oh, that doesn't look like a leaf. It looks like a leaf almost every time. <laughs> it sure does. And once you add a gradient to it, everything is whatever everything. you want. Because people yes. are mesmerized by gradients. Um, exactly. Okay. So we want to add like a little, like a little holder, like a cup. Um, yeah. And I think I know how I want to do it. Uh, with these. If you're just joining us right now, we're here with Bonnie Kate Wolf while she shows us how to illustrate this flower bouquet plant still life with all these mesmerizing rainbow gradients here on Adobe Illustrator. That's if you just joined, I just wanted to give you that heads up. What are you looking at? You're looking at this beautiful still life coming together. Um, it's magical so far. Ooh, and now you're creating kind of like a little holder for yeah. this puffy little flower. Yep. It's Just gonna look like cool. a little, like a little, it looks a bit like a maple leaf, <laughs> but yes. I think once, once it is, um, once you gradient gonna, it, it's gonna look different. Yeah. And once it's on there too, mm -hmm. um, so these, I just need them to be a darker color so that I can see because right now not worrying about color just worrying about Forms. form yeah yeah because like I knew that these leaves would work because I'd done it before whereas now I'm like okay we we plan so I don't know if I actually even need these leaves these little ones I kind of feel like they might actually be taking away from, from this yeah. fun little thing um and I think this is also a little big so it's down okay so I think yeah, because these are just like the side little flowers, right? This isn't yeah. the main event flower yet. Yeah, so we'll save these. We'll just scoot them up to the corner. We'll probably use them somewhere else. From something. Um, so I wanted three of them per my memory of that bouquet. So yes. when I'm doing things in threes is good. Generally, mm -hmm. odd numbers is good. Um, hence why I started with two leaves. Um, I think you can kind of go one of two ways with this approach. You can either be like, okay, we're going very symmetrical. So we're going to have one perfectly centered one and one and two that come out on the sides, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Kind of like this is pretty symmetrical or yeah. you can do like the floral designer did it, which is probably in this case, the way that I'm going to go, um, which is to have like not as many over here, more over here. So asymmetrical. So we're yes. going to. 
I think those are like what I what I've been seeing a lot of is like the more asymmetrical bouquets. We're moving. I think it's like trending now to be to have these kind of like weirder yeah. bouquets as opposed to the let's say Instagram era where it was like the perfect perfect bouquet. It's like very tight yeah. and there's no gaps in it. Um and it's perfectly round. And now we're moving towards cooler, flowier things. Ooh, this I'm just looks really cool. The pencil tool to add. Pencil tool coming in. Yep. Pencil tool. And I think I should probably, for the folks at home, um, I'm going to show you what I'm using when I'm doing all of this, including all the pencil tool stuff. It's a mouse. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. People are always curious what you're using. Is it a Wacom? Yep. Is it this or that? Is it an iPad attached to something else? It's like, just nope. a mouse, you guys. It's a mouse. Like you can get a I mouse. Think, you probably I have think a, a mouse. lot of <laughs> folks, especially. I'm gonna make it's a very generalized statement, but like if you Let's were do it. if you were born in like the early to mid 90s to a middle class family, you used a mouse if you got to do computer stuff, and you're probably still very attached to that mouse. I did not have a trackpad situation. I had that little red nubbin at one point yeah, on that my was very, <laughs> very first laptop. Um, but the mouse was what I used when I was a kid making drawings on the computer in like starting with kid pics back in the very, very Ooh, early days. Wow. And then like using a Jask Paint Shop Pro because we could not yet afford Photoshop. Mm -hmm. um, and then my grandmother had a client who worked at Adobe or something was able to help get me a discounted copy of Photoshop. And so that was a very happy day for me. Wow. So wow. I love that up. your little, your story, like the <laughs> success story of graduating to Photoshop, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so started sweet. <laughs> not, not so fancy, then got more fancy. I love that. I feel like I was on MS paint for quite some time before yes. I upgraded to anything. Um, that wasn't like a online kind of random tool that lasted for like a couple months before I went out or something. So <laughs> I'm just drawing in some petals because um, okay. I'm, I'm going to do one of these guys now to just kind of build those wild bouquet. roses. They're so pretty. I think that's what they are. Do you have a favorite flower, Bonnie Kate? While we're oh, here watching you draw them, of course, them? a peony. Ooh, I love they peonies. are beautiful. I saw peony tulips the other day and they're what like, is that hybrid it's available, I at, need to available at Trader Joe's. Um, and it was, a, they were so cool and they, they, uh, they were just so cool. You, you got to look them up. I'm sure you'll put them in a, in a piece because they are like wonky and weirder than, than peonies, but still like very, I like it. uh, intricate. Um, for the chat, this question goes out to you guys to comment in the chat. What's your favorite flower? We already have Bonnie Cates. I want to know your favorite flower. For me, I'm a little basic. I like a tulip. I mean, I like peonies I too, but I like tulips. I think they're like funny looking. They have like, they're like kind of crazy. <laughs> okay. That little wild rose looks amazing. Tell me here. You're just using the gradient tool now. Yeah. So what I'm, uh, what I'm doing is trying to, I basically just plopped on top of this to get all the kind of yeah. shapes of these different petals in, mm -hmm. um, just really loosely. Um, I don't know if I'll approach this one the same way. We'll, <laughs> we'll find out. We'll see. Um, but I just wanted to get them all to have the same gradient so that I can then, so they're kind of colored the same before mm -hmm. I go in and, um, customize customize because we're going to use the gradient tool so i'm not using my palette and you know what's happened immediately i'm like ah what color you're like and um 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 um, i'm lost like, yeah because it's just like i have this but i don't want to necessarily just replicate this exact right. flower i'm using this it's a reference point. Not I, you want to bring yeah. it to your world like i like that it's kind of this oh kind of color but I think like there's the color. Yeah, <laughs> that's yes, that's yes. probably the color we actually want. So like, there's that, and then this. I think we can grab that pink and then just make it. It's beautiful to see that you have like your, the even the colors that you the, what am I trying to say? Even the photos that you picked, do have a range within your own color palette. Mm -hmm. I think that's really handy. It's like, you knew what, what, you know, exactly what you yep. like, right? So everything kind of plays to that. Yep. 
And that's what's going to make, I think, your art stand out from anyone else doing, it could be the same exact subject matter, is yeah. if you do it in your way, with your colors, with your way of drawing, with your tools, whatever it is that makes your thing feel like, you know, you, that is how you're going to end up with something that feels more Differentiating unique. yourself from everything else out mm-hmm. there. I want to give you an update on the on the flower end, yes, Bonnie Kate. Please. We have roses. People, uh, that's Becca mm-hmm. Smith. She's a fan of roses. Bliss Art says hibiscus, dan- dandelions, calen- calendula. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Oh, guys. calendula. Calendula there is a dying go. plant. That is, I I like that choice. That's a good yes. One. And tulips. So you know, we have a bunch of different flowers being represented here today wade says wild spider lilies i don't know if i've seen those i'm gonna have to i'm gonna yes. have to find those <laughs> i am i that. am not up and up on the wild spider lilies. i have That's no idea badass. what those are but they sound really cool and paloma paloma says hydrangeas we have tara here mm. with peonies so you know we have an amazing different collection of, of flower representation today on the stream and maybe you'll be inspired to include some of those in your next piece Bonnie Kate because yes. uh, they sound cool zinnias for all the colors mm. frangipani frangipani I don't know if I'm French saying that right I <laughs> that I grow in a few colors oh my god Carol you grow them amazing I love it Okay, so Bonnie Kate, I'm tell me what's happening here. Yeah. yeah, so now that I've got the basic color down, I'm just making a couple of them a bit darker um, to kind of give some variety. Um, and then this guy is, I'm looking, I'm also, I'm looking at this. I'm like, hmm, that petal's really green. What does that tell me? It's slightly translucent, so. Mm, okay. Yep. Oh, maybe not that translucent though. 60%. There we go. So we can, and I can tell this one also down here, just having variety, right? These yes. are natural objects. So like this one doesn't have to be the same translucency as that one. Um, in fact, I might make them all kind of, oh wait, I was going to say I'll make them all slightly translucent. Then what I realized is because I haven't built out the full shape in like a three-dimensional oh, form, you're yeah. going to see all my see awkward all the little, little shapes. cuts. Yeah. So we're not going to do that exactly, but there we go. But, but something can, like it. Yeah, I'm going to just make a couple of these that, and I may add more petals just to, just to be able to do more, um, more layers ones? of opacity. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's always the tricky part when you're building something like a flower or w- once you have a shape that's very complex and you have multiple shapes building it, that's when it gets hard when you start adding the color and you're like, wait, no, now you can see through that. And I didn't want yes. to cut it. And I need, and you start doing some mathematics <laughs> yes. to make sure that it all looks right. I think what we need to do before I can add more petals is put all these petals facing in the correct direction. So this one, and also we're remembering our light source is coming yes, from over here. From upper left. Yes, we're going to just put a nice little sun there so we don't forget. There we go. There's our sun so we remember where Yay. the light source comes from okay. because what we basically want to do is um, light this clump okay. in one color or like one, like, and this clump. This region in, in another. Okay. Yeah, in a darker color because the flower is still based, in this case, this flower is kind of still an orb. So we still want to light it like an orb um speaking of orbs there goes your mic orb um let's see i'm not sure if i can hear you okay there you go (laughs) all is well it switched to my airpods and it went back okay Okay. you stay up there no more of this okay (laughs) i'm 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 working with my my thumb setup so yeah we have an orb basically so like we this is an orb right and we know that if you're lighting a, a sphere you would basically have like a point of light here and you would have darker here like the death star um so we want to light this object the same way so the issue is if we light everything the same like all kind of one color it's it's going to kind of lose the dimensionality yes it'll be really flat flat. and then in some styles that works great like we're we're doing Bauhaus like let's be flat but in this case I'm adding more kind of realism to my yeah lighting so um so what i'm going to do is i have all my individual petals um but i'm going to just go in and darken the ones um 
that Got it. are the ones on that, that you know side. are on the on the right. Okay, yep. beautiful. Yeah. So even in this style that's very stylized and not realistic, you still have a light source that is very much realistic influencing this piece. But I think that's yep. what kind of uh, sells kind of the aesthetic a little bit more, right? Even if it's kind of uh, magical and and otherworldly, it still feels like something we know mm -hmm. because of the light source. Yep. And also, it's just fun to light things. It and is. I do make a lot of decisions in my art about what would be the most fun. Um, yeah, so now we've got, these are a little bit darker. These are a little bit lighter. We can play around a bit more with it, but I need to get the gradients in the right order. Okay. No more jumping off of my antique sewing bobbin microphone. <laughs> um, so, oh, I put this on top there. So we'll keep that there to keep in mind, like, mm -hmm. this is how that kind the of shape overall. is looking. Mm -hmm. This is kind of its own, it's kind of jutting out. So I want that lighter color from the bottom. Um, then we're probably going to have, like, if we're looking at this, it's light at the top, dark at the bottom, like yeah. for each individual petal. So let's play with light that. them all. That one's already kind of doing it. Flowers are perfect for all these gradients. Each little petal has its own gradient. I'm going to tell you a secret. And the secret is everything is perfect perfect for gradients oh I guess you're right now you're totally right you're totally I right I love gradients <laughs> I totally I can see that I feel like I wasn't that excited about lighting prior to the stream and now I'm like amped I'm so amped and I feel like everyone in the chat can can feel feel the same way most likely <laughs> I'm so, speaking for everyone in the chat this okay. is working okay I feel like we're we're getting somewhere legit. with this that looks great and again, we have to like keep in mind our, our principles from earlier about like not getting too in the weeds before we yeah. do the, because I might be like, oh, and then I design every other flower and actually the other flowers are less abstract or are more abstract. And then this one's like super realistic. Taxed. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, I think that. It's almost like when you build Ikea furniture and you have to put in all the screws, but you can't tighten all of them. At, yes. at first, you have to like put them all in loosely and then tighten the whole thing together. That's kind of like how we have to work in this piece, I feel. Like you got to get everything 75% there and then do the last 25% all together. I'm just seeing what happens if I add some blurry ones in the background. It looks cool. I'll I tell think you that. It's going to look rad. I'm down we remember for it. Our, our inspo picture of this guy and this i think is made in procreate so they're yeah. able to do it in a slightly different like a, way a different warping yeah blend. yeah but we're smudge we're we're having our own fun and so you can do whatever whatever you like and i think that looks really cool and i can't wait to see it on the actual artboard yes i'm very curious to see kind of how it's gonna how it's, it's gonna, gonna be an out. exciting moment for for all of us here tuning in okay oh I didn't I want to just gosh that's blur. a hot little tip um okay. you can apply the last effect that you had again um just by going to effect and it's also there's also a key command but um okay so I think that for now we should probably not get bogged down with how many more petals I want to add to this, which yeah. is like a hundred. So um, I'm going to just put it into a little group to simplify. And then we're going to just drag bring it over. over. So it's it's, teeny. Ah, it's real small. So we're going to definitely go a bit bigger. The other thing we're noticing is it looks a bit like a bunch of stones. I'm not sure how I feel about this um, is there is not enough contrast between it and the background. Um, did we keep yeah, our we, we were working on our, that dark mustard uh like background. good contrast here not so good we're losing a lot of these edges yeah but it's okay because they're going to be layered on top of each other so we can also put a leaf behind a dark it, leaf like, behind it or something else yep yep um we could also oh i did i i made illustrator giant did i oh yes I'm it sure happens. Did. Okay. Hold on one second, guys, as we pull everything in so oh, you can weird. see all these different settings that are happening here. That's weird. 
Illustrator seems to, okay. Huh. Thank you for calling. All That's right. I don't, I don't know how it did it. If we... Hey guys, we're going to be back in like 30 seconds while we get this all settled. All right, guys, we're back. We're back. (laughs) We're back with Bonnie K here in Adobe Illustrator creating this amazing still life. If you're just joining us, remember you can drop your questions in the chat for us while we work on this. So bring us your questions so Bonnie K can answer them. All right, we're still working here on this wild rose that you said looked like pebbles, I think is what you said. It's a little pebbly to me. But it might might change as you add other elements. Like, we don't know yet. It might. Yeah, so I think this is the case of like, I could spend a lot of time iterating on it, or I can pause and do some other stuff and see how I still feel because it might be my own personal bias. I think we all judge our own work so much more harshly than we judge everyone else. Um, So I might let it sit and see how I feel once I've done this amazing looking flower. Yeah. You also can't create and judge at the same exact time. You have to give space a little bit for both, right? That's otherwise you're gonna go a little (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I I think it's really easy to, as you're making it, be like, this is not looking good. This is looking like trash. I hate it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you look at it a couple days later and you're like, oh, it wasn't so bad. Um, it wasn't so bad. It's never as bad as you feel in the moment. You're like, oh my gosh, is this the worst piece of art I've ever made in my entire yes. life? And then a couple days go by and you're like, oh, it's it's pretty average. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was fine. It was <laughs> fine. It was Everything's fine. <laughs> no need to have a panic attack over it just yet okay this beautiful flower that you are obsessed with since the beginning you've been talking yeah, about this I really like some it. sort of daisy i'm gonna say but please botanist no idea botanist in the chat please don't come for us okay <laughs> <laughs> we don't know things we're we just don't artists. know but if you do know let us know kindly um I, I i feel like i know my brain is trying to tell me and i am not sure um so what i'm gonna try and do is uh, zero dash and a two point gap. Okay. Why okay. am I doing this? Why please, did I make this? Please because explain. Because I want a bunch of circles in a line. And so okay. what we're going to then do is set, yeah, arrowheads. Oh, just kidding. Not arrowheads. Cap. Look Ooh. at that. The magic. So okay. the way that this works, this is a, this is a classic illustrator tip. Um, so what you do is you make a dashed line. It doesn't matter if it's a circle or a, a lined line. Any like, sort of line. Any sort of line. Like you can say okay. I just drew that with the same uh, settings and it also makes a line of dots. Um, what's happening is you told the width of this line to be two pixels. So the distance essentially of the circle is two pixels. Uh, and then we've told it to be dashed. So we're creating individual, these little these little dashes. And then we've told it to have a gap of two pixels. So the distance from the center of here to the center of here is the same as it is essentially tall. And then you put a round cap. So it's then putting a circle on either side. Yep. Um, So Perfectly connected bunch of circles. Yep. So we could then make this, if we want them to be closer together, you can make Mm -hmm. the weight bigger. Or if you want them farther apart, you can make the gap larger. Um, Oh, that's cool. 
Yes. So it's a really fast way of creating dotted lines um, mm -hmm. and you can do all sorts of things. Like I could tell it, I want then my dash to be zero and my gap to be five. And now I've got, actually that looks another. awesome. That looks so cool. Oh, I like it a lot. Okay. Let's keep that. What I want to do is create a couple of these inside of here. Um, I think I'm just going to knock it up a bit in size. Um, okay. Not, nice. not too small. Um, and then do an even little kind of smaller one in, oops, in there. Oh, I need to, there is a, um, What's a going hot on? tip. Yeah. So I'm going to go into my transform palette. Um, mm -hmm. so there's a setting in here that I forget I have to, uh, adjust, which is scale stroke and effects. I'm going to turn that off. Um, okay. so when it was on, you remember it was kind of scaling oh, this where it was, okay. everything was getting smaller. I want the same size dots. I um, just want let, you know, a smaller overall shape. Yes. I want to just the it. shape, but not the style. So cool. That, Ooh, that looks, looking, that looks really they look cool. like peanuts, like little yeah. peanuts. I kind of like these little peanuts. I love them. They're quirky. They're very quirky. Oh, that's perfect. There we go. I'm trying to kind of get more of the edge covered. Okay. I really like that. Um, I'm going to use our old friend. I'm going to see if I can actually use the gradient mesh tool to create what I want, which is not one. One is no rows. There we go. Um, I okay. just want to make this guy feel like, like a, a little round mound. Yep. Like Perfect. doesn't have to be complicated. I just wanted him. And again, the color, I'm like, I can always figure that out later. If the shapes yeah. are not working, then the color is definitely not gonna work. Um, okay, so we have to decide how we want to execute this. Like, do we want to use individual petals like I did last time? Do we wanna use a shape? Like, there's a lot of uh, decisions to be made here. Um, what I really liked about it was the little crown of yellow dots. Mm -hmm. I also really like, I'm gonna just scratch that a little bit, um, that there's this kind of like bright pink in the middle and then it fades of course the gradient i like the gradient um it kind of fades out to the Naturally. orange and then to the almost white like mm -hmm. very light peach um so we have a lot of petals here to work with so we have a little yeah. bit of like a configuration to work out and we have to figure out like what's I'm also making decisions about this little shape. Like <laughs> what, what matters? Like, could I do this with just a bunch of circles that kind of form a shape? Do I need individual petals? I right. th think what I'm going to do is try and minimize the number of petals so that it's not quite as complicated. And I'm going to kind of approach it like we did with the leaves. So maybe like the clusters, right? Yeah. Always... So mm -hmm. I think the basic shape of one of the petals is, or like of a couple petals together is kind of a shape like that. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to just try doing a couple, a couple of, of those. These. Yeah. Like a couple of hearts. I'm not going to worry so much. Oh, I think that's going to work nicely. I think so. This is the kind of part of drawing. I find a little bit stressful. I'm like, Oh, what if I mess it up? And it's, it's like the oh my unknown gosh, it's like flower drawing. It's fine. <laughs> like, it's the unknown of drawing. Mm -hmm. What will you and draw next? That's how you end up with things that are cool like cool and fun and surprising is by doing things that maybe you wouldn't have expected to do yeah. and using your knowledge of other things like I know those leaves really worked out with this kind of heart shape mm -hmm. yeah see I feel like this is really this is paying off whatever it is this that, is correct this this is correct this is correct uh despite what you might feel this is correct so let's I'm gonna just oops mm -hmm. I just need to grab and I have to like figure out which ones go on top, which ones go underneath. Yeah, to give so it I'm that make dimension. This a, a group. Yeah, see, this is the thing. I thought that that should all be these shouldn't be on top, but actually, even though it's a little different from how that looks, I think it looks better when yeah, I when think it some has to of be them are layered. Up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, then let's let's get our gradient on these so that when we draw a couple more, we'll have the gradient. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to our trusty color palette. Um, and we, oh, not radial gradient. There we go. Um, so okay. the color in the middle, I'm using it. I'm using the bright pink. Finally, <laughs> I get to use it. And then this color. So I feel like that's pretty close. Um, we that's just need pretty cool. to add in another little lighter. Everyone in the chat is baffled how you're doing this with a mouse. 
I knew that I should show this because otherwise we get to the end and they'd be like, what? what? <laughs> She's a uh, mouse girl, you guys. The mouse is my best friend. Um, <laughs> so let's go through. Oh, oh, I pressed, it's G. That's, I, or F, it was F. Whoever in the comments said it was F, that it was, you were right. Yes. 10 points to whoever said F. You can collect your points. <laughs> Gotta after not stream. click that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I press. It's. I'm. I meant to press V. I'm pressing F. So it's then doing full screen. Um, uh, because I'm kind. Of, I'm a very transparent person. Uh, audience, I'm going to tell you that I have a monitor that is way too too large. Um, it was gifted to me as a. Um, oh, what do you call it? a regift? It was a regift essentially mm. from my boyfriend. It was his like old it. monitor. Oh um, yes. He, yes. Yes, he, he gave it to me to use. Um, I would never normally use such a large monitor. I would just use my MacBook Air because um, I'm not that fancy. But because the monitor is so large, we're doing some magical tech business uh, to make it so it fits on the screen. Um, yes. And then when she clicks F, you miss out on some of the juicy yes. details of the stream. And so we have anyways, it. we have to not click that F button. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we have an amazing question while you work out the gradients of this leaf here. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of funny. Do you have any mouse recommendations since you are such a, ah. a pro mouse user um, from Tara Yazdani? I do have. So I am using the Logitech MX Master 3. Um, it is a great non-vertical mouse. Um, I have tried the Logitech vertical mouse. Um, I just couldn't can adapt i couldn't i was like oh i'm slow now like, <laughs> what's <laughs> happening <laughs> yeah so i i went back to using this but i really like this so if you like just a flat mouse mx3 is great um if you want a vertical mouse it was an awesome vertical mouse i just have weak hands it's, or yes. they're too strong in the way they are or something um, yes yes it's, it takes a long while to adapt to a vertical yes. mouse if you're not used to it but it can be beneficial long term so you yes know, it can up to you yeah i think that the the trick with um with any sort of like learning learning a new bit of of tech is like mm -hmm. you have to give yourself a huge amount of space to adapt to it and yeah very easily you can be like oh i just need to get my work done <laughs> i don't have time to be 15 to 30 percent slower because exactly I'm learning even my if new it's mouse. only even if it's only 15 percent, it feels like way too much at the moment but it might take it you a couple like weeks a and then you'll be okay if you have a couple weeks to spare um adapting to a new mouse bk this looks really cool i'm, I'm having such a good time this oh, is no, amazing. No, 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 no. I do that. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Trying no, to no. figure out how much pink. <laughs> okay. That seems pretty good. Again, we're like, we're trying to get these, we're trying to get these close, but not perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're adding that second set of petals yes. that kind of radiate. Yeah. And I think this is where it's really going to come together. I Another so thought. Good. Oh, sorry. Go for it. No, I, I just was agreeing with you. I think it's going to look really oh. cool. <laughs> I'm excited. I realized another another thought I have about the mouse um, is depending on the style of drawing that you're going for, um, it can make it really easy to get a kind of like naive or like childlike or like really relaxed kind of style of drawing yeah. when you use the mouse, um, just because you're like unable to have super, super Total duper control. control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like for drawing these, it's it's actually really nice, mm -hmm. I find, to have these real chilled out shapes. It, it definitely lends itself towards this kind of more kind of cut out feel, right? Like a little chunkier, mm -hmm. as opposed, if you're an artist who creates very detailed line work drawings, Maybe yeah. a mouse will work against you in a way. Might not be for you. Uh, it might not be the right choice for you. And I wouldn't uh, feel bad about that. I think using something else would just speed up your whole workflow. So definitely figure out what works for the kind of work you're trying mm -hmm. to accomplish. I really think that like there's there's like a narrative like that certain tools are better than others or like you need a certain tool to be able to execute a certain thing. And like really what it comes down to is like 
what do you need to be successful mm -hmm. in the in executing what you want and if you're like oh bk i'm never going to use a mouse because you crazy and i'm like mm -hmm, that is cool and i <laughs> have tried using a tablet i was like a tablet makes sense like i and i know how to draw with my hands but in the end it just it didn't it doesn't work for me in the same way um and so i i like the mouse and that, that's good we all and have our own preferences own yes mm -hmm. i agree yep. so try it out give it a shot but also find what works for you don't feel like you have to use a mouse just because you know today we're using a mouse <laughs> This is looking so beautiful. It's looking like yeah. the most perfect flower that ever was. I'm really, I'm feeling real good about this one now. I'm like, I okay. Can't, I can't wait to see it on the background, um, but I'll yeah. patiently wait for it. There we go. I think that's, again, like there might be things we would fiddle with. And like, if I was spending way too much time mm -hmm. on this, because just because we got a lot of other flowers to do. Yeah. Um, one thing I would probably do just as I'm looking at these shapes, yeah, is make this purple because we need more colors. Um, throw this. Okay. I'm trying to bring it. There we go. Um, I'm trying to bring it into the right point. Um, right in between. Yeah. Uh, I've lost my purple. It's fine. We're gonna grab an approximate kind of purple. Okay. There we go. Um, oh, I'm curious to see how this is gonna look. Oops. <laughs> So I'm just gonna delete it real quick. It's gonna no. it's gonna just be gone. And this was so we I may end up seeing this and be like, well now I have to do it, but like mm, okay. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna I actually am gonna go pop this on the on the our main background. Here now, we so go, if, guys. Yeah. So it's it's real small because these are small, but it's fine. We can yeah, scale it yeah, up. yeah. Um the beauty of Illustrator. Yeah, is I think I would, I'm not sure exactly how I would execute it, but basically into each of these little petals, I think I would add these little overlays. Maybe we should just do this because I'm kind of liking how it's looking. It does look cool. Are you thinking of putting a blur on those or just like that? I was thinking a blur, but I'm also thinking actually a blend kind of might be the kind move. of cool. Mm. Hard light's kind of interesting. I'm going to, I'm going to make it a bit bigger. Um, so remember we talked about the scale stroke and effects. We're going to turn that. Ooh. So I'll show you, I'll show you the two flowers. The so one, yes. yeah. One where it's not turned on. So our little peanuts kind of stay like little peanuts, mm -hmm. but they're real small now, but which is, I, I don't hate it, but I'm not sure that it's kind of the right scale. I think what I yeah. actually have to do is adjust them, but, and this mm -hmm. one, we're going to scale everything. Okay. And so oh, it kind yeah. of keeps and that the little looks, peanuts. That looks Big like peanuts. how we intended it for it to look. Yes. So I'm going to, I do think it would be nice to have a couple more peanuts. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to just change the width down to four. So they're not quite as small. And then we'll change that to three. Mm -hmm. And it's so cool how easily you can just edit that as opposed to having to create. If, if oh, this yeah. wasn't a stroke, you'd have to create them individually and remove and readjust it'd be really tedious yeah I like these I think they could be a little darker I'm curious if we I love seeing all these tiny little adjustments there we go I think that's that's the business that's where we're ooh, not that gotta keep it in the purple blue range though okay cool. I like those I'm gonna I'm into this flower It is looking awesome. If you have all of the windows on the building lit up, it does mm -hmm. not look nearly as good as if you light, say, half of the windows. Um, right. And for some reason, having things that are kind of uneven, there is a very pleasant... Yeah, I mean, I think when things are a little bit odd numbered, uh, it looks a little more interesting. Yeah, so like not having all of these have these little guys, I think is gonna give it a bit of visual interest. Um, even if you look at, so like one of my favorite artists is, I I apologize to her for butchering her name as I'm about to do, um, 
because I do not know how to pronounce her last name, but her name is Lata Nin Ninaman. I'm not, it's very. <laughs> And she still, there'll be little imperfections that add a huge amount to what she does. Um, so even artists where you're like, oh, everything is so perfect. It's not, it's still not going to be a hundred percent perfect because that it, there needs to be some imperfection. Yeah. To give it some visual interest. Otherwise mm -hmm. it's just too, too tidy. I like that. because I was a cool teenager. Um, and there there was, uh, my mom told me, well, on the Wired magazine um, covers, which are always beautifully designed, uh, she said that they have a principle, which is to always add an error to the magazine cover. It looks, so good like it's it's subtle but they just add this little imperfection and it it does a lot okay i feel like we that's pretty cool that's lovely i love that little flower I, that we're going for i'm not sure how i feel about this rose at this moment um, but I'm, I'm open to the, ooh, I'm open to the rose working out. Just, I need some time to think about it. I love this flower. I feel like it adds so much personality. The rose was like calm and this one is just like, boom, in your face, blooming. That's pretty good. I think, I think we, I think we should probably stop there with this one just to kind of get some more in here. Um, maybe we should try and get some of these colors actually a little bit stronger in these little flowers, just because we're now starting to actually see the picture. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, All right, I guys, like we need to take a little break just to reconfigure. We'll be right oh. back. Thank you.
Hey guys, thanks for sticking around through those little tech hiccups. You know, we're doing a lot here on Adobe Live. If uh, you're just joining us now, well, thanks for being here. We're here with Bonnie Kate, illustrator and designer. We've been working on this amazing piece, um, Still Life, with all these amazing ingredients. What you, you've taught us so much today on the stream, Bonnie Kate. You did uh, gradient mesh, uh, then we did freeform gradient. We have some tips and tricks with the stroke, uh, some other warp tool tricks. We've gone over so many different tools. If you missed it, be sure to catch the replay because you can catch up because we'll be going live again tomorrow here with Bonnie Kate. What do you have to say, Bonnie, before we go, before we wrap up? Well, in any case, Bonnie Kate, we're so happy to have you here today. Thanks so much for sharing everything with us about your process. We'll be back tomorrow with Bonnie Kate to finish up this piece and figure out all these little tech hiccups along the way so that we're ready to go for tomorrow um, as she puts the finishing touches on this bouquet. Now, please stick around for the Illustrator Creative Challenges with Jack Watson, followed by Power Prompts with Cody Bear. For tonight, your homework is to go ahead and follow Bonnie Kate on Twitter so you can check out all her work and tune back in tomorrow. Plus, remember to subscribe to our Adobe Live channel on YouTube so you don't miss our next live. Thanks so much for being here, everyone, including Bonnie Kate, including you in the chat. Thank you all. Bye, guys.